This morning as we pray, I want us to pray for those right now who are, are in fear. I want to pray for those who are worried about things, who are worried about their children, who are worried about their parents, who are worried about their businesses, who are worried about their retirements, who are just worried about all the things that are happening right now. And you may be one of those people that worries. I'm there. But we have a God who has us. And so let's pray to God right now. Lord God, we thank you that in moments like these, we can put our trust in you. We thank you that we are your children and that you are our God and that you provide for us. And as we pray this prayer today, I pray that you would touch the hearts of those who are afraid and give them the assurance of your presence. May your light so brightly shine upon them that no matter how the darkness of the moment feels, they will know your light and know that they are yours. And God, we pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are caring for the sick, who are, are taking those extra steps to, to really sacrifice themselves to take care of others. We pray for your protection. We pray for your strength. We pray for your wisdom for our leaders. We pray that you would watch over our church. We pray that you would watch over our country and our city and our region. We pray that you would also open our hearts to the ways that we can be your church in times like these. Lord, this is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Good morning. As you can hear the echoes of emptiness from Cedar Lane United Methodist Church. This morning, we're not gathering, as you can tell. You're not here. And it's a strange feeling to be in this place without you. And so today, I want us to think for a few moments about who we are. Because a part of our DNA is to gather. At Cedar Lane, another part of our DNA is to hug, to shake hands, to pat on the back, all those things that we really can't do right now. Last Sunday, uh, I put up the sign, made the sign that said, hug free hospitality with options. You could say, I love you. You could wave. You could blow kisses as long as you didn't actually blow. Uh, and you could do live long and prosper. But you weren't supposed to hug. But even with that, people got up and hugged. People got up and patted on backs and shook hands and all those things. And right now, that's not a great thing to do. We should be washing our hands over and over again. At this point, my hands are raw from being washed so many times. And I know you probably have a loss for toilet paper, but, but you know, the truth is if you, if you need to come to the office, uh, like if you want to bring your offering to the office, you can do that. We actually have toilet paper in the bathroom and you can use that if you need to. All those things, all those things that have caused fear and all that, we're, we're not about that. We are the church. And I was reminded as I thought about this that, you know, being a people who gather is a part of our DNA. It is who we are. We are the church. We gather together. We sing together. We pray together. We do all those things together. But there's another aspect of the church that you're doing right now, and that is we go out. We're away from each other, and that's where we live out the faith. I was thinking about the fact that, you know, a lot of times we confuse this place, this building, these seats, this, this gathering place, this sanctuary for being church. But at Chris Redcorn's funeral, we sang a song. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. And that song says it all. This is not the church. This is an empty building, completely empty right now, except for me. Because the church is right out there where you are. The church is right out there. And it's in your heart and it lives through you because the body of Christ is us. And as we get out there into the world and live that, that's how people know about the kingdom of God. And I want to tell you, I really miss the fact we can't be together, but I understand it. I understand the concept of social distancing, but I also realize that, that we're not built for social distancing. We're made we're made to go out into the world. We're told to go out into the world. And right now we've got to do it in some different ways. We had a discussion this morning about how we're going to continue to do the food pantry because just because of all the health concerns does not alleviate people's need for food. So we are going to work out a way that people will be able to come get their food at the same time protecting the volunteers and protecting our neighbors who come for food so that they are as safe health health wise as they can be. We have to kind of we have to come up with ways that we can continue to be the church, continue to live out that DNA that God put into us at the same time living in the times we live in. You know, it, it is difficult to know that we're gone out of this place for two weeks. Now we will, the office will be open. Uh, we'll take care of any pastoral needs. There's no need to be afraid of that. But we're not going to get in anybody's face. We're not going to be in a place to where uh, there's nothing casual going to happen. If, all, if it's a matter of life and death, it's a matter of something, something that's of extreme importance. We will be there, but we don't want to transmit this virus if any of us have it. We want to be there. We want to be the church. We will be the church. And it is my prayer, and I hope it will be your prayer, that we will find the ways to do the things we need to do for the kingdom of God. But you know in a time where we're taking at least two weeks off, hopefully it's just two weeks, Disney and all the Disney parks, Disney cruises, Universal, Universal Studios and their parks are all closed till the end of the month. Can you imagine the economic hit that that takes on them? But they're multi-billion dollar companies. 
it takes a hit on us too. Not being together and not, not um, having an offering is tough. And so if you will consider wherever you are, putting a little money aside and either you can mail it in with a check or you can, uh, we're looking for some ways to do it online. Let's face it, it caught us a little behind. We're not so high tech, but we need to be a little more with the times. But we will continue to be the church. We will continue to operate. We will continue to do ministry and we will continue to lift you up and help you in any way that we can. So my prayer is a prayer that we're going to pray right now together. And I hope you'll continue to pray. I hope you'll take time as families or whoever you're with, or if you're alone, take time to get into your Bible and read some. Take time to maybe sing a song together. Take time to kind of enjoy this time and make the best of it. Let's pray. Lord, we are thankful to be your church, and we know that we were called to a time just like this, or you wouldn't have us in this time. So use us open our minds, expand our consciousness, expand our vision to what you would have us to do. And thank you, God, for being our God and allowing us to be your children. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now you be safe, keep praying, and wash your hands over and over again. Love you all. Love you. Live long and prosper. My hands aren't that coordinated.